Oh, hey you. It's Kat and Steve with the Positively Midwest podcast. Well, hello there. Now, before this next episode, let's talk about sharing our mission. To help, we have hooked up with Anchor.fm to help us keep launching Positively Midwest to as many ears as possible. The more we expand our reach, the more lives we can help inspire. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Bonus, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Well, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and yeah, many more. You can make money with no minimum listenership, which helps our cause. It's everything you need to make a podcast in just one place. So go now, download free Anchor app or go to anchorapp.fm to get started. Now, sit back and enjoy the next episode of the Positively Midwest Podcast. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Positively Midwest. Boy, oh boy, we're just racking up the numbers now. We are on number 63 for episodes and across from me as always is my lovely wife, Catherine. Hello, Steve. How are you today? Are you feeling positive today, babe? Yes, babe. I'm feeling quite positive today. And we've got an exciting guest with us today, too, on this episode. Um, We uh, got to hook up with Patty Patron Miller from this up-and-coming animated series that's in pre-production called Thumbs Up. And uh, Patty, would you like to say hi to all the folks? Yes. Hi, everybody. So nice to be here. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming on to the show. Uh, again, our, our mutual friend Steve Joyner hooked us up, uh, and uh, you've got some exciting things going on, so we want to kind of just get right into it, but um, tell us a little bit about your your background and then lead into this this uh, animated series and, and why you know it it's so important to you because it's, it's a very unique um, context. Yes. Well, it actually started... Uh Back in 20, uh, 2009, uh, I, prior to that, I was an educator. I taught special education, special needs children uh, for 22 years. Um, and uh, it all started with uh, a little, a special little dog, uh, Sheltie, that my husband and I uh, found in a local pet store. And we decided to make him part of our family. His name was Elliot. And Elliot was a very bright little thing. Um, and it was because of him that we started this. And the boy, Joseph, in the series was based on my late son, Joseph, uh, who died in infancy. Um, so that, that's basically how we put this whole thing together. We wanted a story that would uh, basically uh, be for Elliot. And Elliot is a special little guy. He, he, uh, he has opposable thumbs in this series. And Joseph, of course, is a boy with... Uh, autism and he doesn't speak uh, and his parents are at wit's end and um, they they just don't know what to do like most parents are with a, a child that's on the spectrum. Uh, it does get frustrating. We live on the spectrum every day. Uh, we have family members on the spectrum as well. And I have one that's very close to me that's on the spectrum, uh, but we survive. Um, so it, it, you know, it, it starts out with a little boy who can't speak, and one day the parents get a flyer uh, in the mail, and it's for a, a dog shelter. And they stop and they think, well, maybe it's a possibility. Would a dog help? Now, you have to remember, back in 2009, when we created this series. Uh, they didn't have... Uh, therapy dogs for anybody on the spectrum. They barely knew what the spectrum was back then. They were trying to treat every single possible uh, disability that was out there that was uh, associated with the neurological system. Um, and we created this. And uh, so it, it's kind of like a first, a first uh, story ever coming out uh, on the spectrum. But they go to a pet shop and they find this special little guy who was uh, sent to the, the uh, shelter from a pet store because nobody wanted him. Now, nobody wanted him because he was different. Uh, he had opposable thumbs. So, you know, who wants a dog that's different? Nobody wants a dog that's different. They they want a normal dog that they can, you know, go outside and play catch with and, and you know, a dog that just does normal things. Elliot can't do most things that normal dogs do because of his uh, 
his thumbs. And then he meets this little boy, Joseph, in the shelter. So they basically find one another, and Joseph brings Elliot home, and they they uh, have a very close bond. Um, and then, you know, the story progresses from there, but it's based on family, uh, compassion, kindness. Uh, it, it's making sure that uh, children on or off the spectrum are not defined by what they have. Uh, that being special doesn't mean that they're, you know, that just they're different. It doesn't mean that, you know, they, there's something wrong with them. It's just that there are certain things that they can't do that other children can. Um, so this is something that, that is going to be for every single family out there, not just families on the spectrum. Uh, we want children to see themselves in this and say, hey, you know what? I can do that. We have an episode where they're going to be building a, a tree house. And as Joseph and Elliot are outside with the help of uh, Joseph's father and his grandfather, Joseph is seen hammering a nail into uh, the wood. And as he's hammering the wood, you know, the nail into the wood, you hear the theme song, which is thumbs up. And you hear thumbs up. We'll be okay. Working it out day by day, and he's hitting that, the nail with the hammer on each note. Um, you know, he, he has to be precise uh, with everything that he does. Um, and then, you know, we have other other series, uh, other episodes in the series, uh, you know, where, where Elliot meets a bully, um, Elliot learns to play music, Elliot learns to boil water, you know, like normal things that, that every child would learn uh, in the household, but they're just a little more challenging for Elliot and uh, Joseph. That has got to be, I mean, that's a very powerful subject to kind of bring to everybody's attention. Plus doing it as an animated series, you know, you're going to be able to help a lot of other children that, you know, aren't um, afflicted in a sense by something like that. So I think it's amazing that you're bringing it now to um, you know, the attention to other people, other children. So if they come across, you know, someone who is um, on whatever context of the spectrum, then then they have more, maybe it's more de-stigmatized or something like that. Mm -hmm. we, we basically want everybody to see themselves in this. You know, parents will see themselves in it as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating when you, you live on the spectrum at times. Um, but it's also very loving. I mean, you, you go through stages you know and every day is, is different i call it a journey um so every day you wake up you never know what you're going to expect um you know of course they they have meltdowns and, and you have to try and figure out well what set off the meltdown um you know and and, and they just do things differently they, their thought process is very different from that of a of a um, i don't want to use the word normal normal is not a word in my vocabulary i would say someone you know, just someone on the spectrum uh, who who can't do certain things, um, you know, like a, a another child could. But, um, that, that's basically what we want to point out because even in this day and age, there are still people out there that don't understand what the spectrum is. Um, they don't understand that it not only includes people with autism, it includes people with Asperger's, it includes people with uh, other mental disabilities, and, and not every child that has autism can do things. There are children with autism that are in wheelchairs, uh, that can't speak, that are mentally retarded. I mean, there, there are so many different degrees of autism out there. Um, you know, that this, you can't just specify one thing when it comes to autism, because some children even have autism and, and Asperger's syndrome together. Um, you know, you'll find children that have Tourette's syndrome and Asperger's and, and autism. I mean, you know, there, there are, are several actors out there now that are actually on the spectrum and you'd never know it. Um, you know, so, so each day and, and, and each challenge is different for, you know, most people on the spectrum. But it's, you know, it comes to the point where when they do something, it's a big deal to them because they say, hey, I can do this. And that's what we want every child to see. We want them to see Elliot and Joseph and say, you know what? I can do the same thing they're doing. I can be anything I want to be. I don't want them to think that they're, you know, their challenges are holding them back or that they're defined by, uh, you know, having autism. 
Um, we, we don't want that. So we're, we're going to leave that out of our series. Um, you know, like you watch shows like The Good Doctor and Atypical, and they focus on autism, which, you know, is a great thing. But we just don't want people on the spectrum to be defined by that because it's not who they are. You know, they're, they're very... Um, they're very intelligent. I mean, if you, you think about it, there are so many people that have autism that created so many different things. You know, the telephone, uh, you know, te most technology has been created by people on the spectrum. Uh, you know, and people don't think about that, but it's actually true, they do. Uh, a lot of the animation that you see in the Marvel movies have been created by people on the spectrum. Uh, Exceptional Minds is one of the, the biggest uh, animation studios in L.A., and they house uh, most people on the spectrum, and they just do a phenomenal job. So, I mean, you just look at things like that and you say, wow, you know, I, I don't, I'm not on the spectrum, and I wish I can do that, but I can't. Um, it, it's just amazing what, what they can do, and, uh, you know, they're, they're just like you and me. You know, they just think differently. They see things differently. They're... Some of them are in their own little worlds, um, but it doesn't mean that there's, there's something wrong with them or that they're stupid or they can't do anything. They're fully capable of doing things that we can do. Um, you know, they just do things differently. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in today's society especially, uh, it's common to categorize or label things, you know, and, and you have to have a, a name for it to, to be able to put it in its place. And, and I appreciate how you, you know, you've talked about that and, um, what you just said, it goes for so many different contexts, I think, with any style of mental health. You know, one of our large missions, if you will, is to uh, destigmatize mental health uh, therapy, you know, just seeking seeking therapy, whatever that means for you. And, uh, you know, it's once you're not, and I like how you said you don't want to use the word normal, once you're looked at as, as some sort of abnormal in a sense, you know, you can be easily written off in a lot of societal situations. Mm -hmm. So I like how, you know, your passion behind this is really going to come out, I think, more and more as these develop. How many uh, do you have a certain amount of episodes written already as far uh, as, you know, content's going to be? 13. There's 13 right now uh, plus the pilot. So, um, you know, we're, we're hoping to get it done as soon as we can. Right now, we just, our focus, our main first focus is getting the book out first. Uh, and then we're going to go from there, uh, you know, as far as financing and everything. That's where, that's the point we're at right now. We need financers. So it would be <laughs> great if someone could step up and give us a hand with that. But, um, you know, we're looking at probably streaming. Uh, so we'll go to Netflix or uh, Hulu. Um, you know, or, or maybe even WB. We don't know. We, we have to see whoever, you know, whoever will be interested in this. But it's going to be a great show. Uh, we have a lot of great people on board. It, it's basically taking a village to put this together. Um, so we are, we are very humbled uh, by the help that we're getting on this and, and humbled by all the people that have reached out to us um, since we started this project. And you'd be amazed... Uh, you know, so many parents with children on the spectrum are, are coming to us and saying, you know, we're so glad that you're doing this. Um, you know, there's nothing out there for children on the spectrum. Uh, you know, and, and like I said earlier, we have uh, The Good Doctor and Atypical, which are great shows, and I love both of them, and I watch them. Uh, I'm a very loyal fan of both shows, uh, and they're very well done. But there's nothing out there for the young children to see. And they really need something. They need something that they can identify with. And, you know, something that resonates with them. So that, that's our purpose here, you know, to, to get the word out, to, to show everybody uh, what it is and, and, you know, how to recognize it. Because nobody, you know, it's very difficult to, to uh, understand or to see. Uh, you know, when you see a screaming child in the grocery store, what do you do? Your your normal reaction would be to turn around and give that parent a dirty look and, you know, or say something, you know, in, in, in terms of, of, you know, tell your, your child to shut up, he's, he's disturbing my shopping. Or, you know, you don't think maybe that child has autism. Maybe that child has some kind of a neurological disease, you know, a, a neurological affliction, I should say, uh, that we don't know about. 
so it's kind of hard, you know, and, and people are very judgmental when they don't understand something. So it's our job as writers to write the best that we can and to help people to understand what's happening around them, the things that they don't see on a, on a normal day-to-day basis, but to recognize the signs and to be respectful and be compassionate and be kind because you, you don't know what that person is going through or that child is going through. Uh, you don't know what that parent is going through. You know, that parent could have woken up that morning to uh, an extreme blowout where it, it took her hours to calm down that child. Um, you, you just don't know. So people need to really sit back and, and listen and look and try to understand and be more accepting of it rather than uh, pushing it aside and ignoring it. Yeah, that really helps put it into a, a different perspective too because I think all too often we know what the the terminology for you know autism or being on the spectrum might be or you might have heard of it, but if you've never experienced it, you know, in a sense we are sheltered and, uh, you know, we, would, we wouldn't understand what that, what that means, you know, to go through something like that. So, Again, I think it's amazing that you're bringing that kind of knowledge to people that wouldn't normally, you know, get that. And it's also in a context you can, um, you know, d- go through that with your children. And maybe it engages the parents to to learn more about this kind of subject, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and you've also, like, you've written a lot, a lot of other children's books, too. Are those also... Um, specific contexts, or how would you no, explain no, some of those? No, no, those are those are fun. Uh, some of them are fun. Uh, they're based on Halloween. I'm I'm a very uh, large Halloween lover. Um, I, I live Halloween every single day. I've lived Halloween since I was three. <laughs> um, so I, I tend to write uh, stories that that bring the you know children out of out of uh, you know their normal everyday uh, realm. Um, so I've, I've written uh, stories on, on, you know, Halloween. Uh, I have uh, a few books out there that are educational. The Wrinklelets uh, is another series that I started. Uh, it's about uh, three little wrinklelets. They look like raisins. Uh, and they just travel around through this little red schoolhouse and a book. And, and this book just takes them anywhere, you know, they, they uh, you know, any anywhere where they can teach children about dinosaurs or they can meet it uh historical person and, and, you know, teach the children about who this person is, uh, things like that. Uh, I, I also wrote a, a book uh, called The Plastic Fisherman, uh, and that's about a little boy named Puck who helps his father uh, get all the garbage out of the ocean. They travel in these small boats. It's actually based on a true story uh, about a, a father and a son team in Russia who would go out every single morning early 4 a.m. And, and just go out in their little tiny boat and get all the plastic out of the, the water. Uh, so that one, I have that one. Uh, and I have another book about uh, the elephants in Africa. Uh, I have uh, books on uh, space. I, I have a series called the uh, Snow Bunny Science Week, and that's about... Uh, Children learning, uh, this, they're STEM books, basically. So children are going to be learning about science and math and, um, you know, and those. Um, but, yeah, I, I try to give the children a variety. And, of course, now I'm going back into uh, adult books, which is where it all started back in, in the, uh, the early uh, 1980s you know, when I first published. But um, it, I, I tend to give people a variety of, of different books. But this one in particular thumbs up is is the heart of everything that I have ever written uh, and it means the most you know to to us uh, which is why we're working so hard on it I mean it's, it's been since 2009 and you know here it is 2021 and and you know, we're still trying to get that puppy out but um, it'll it'll get there it's, it's getting there slowly but surely well and it sounds like it's getting them a lot closer, um, you know, than it has been. And now you've even got, when it comes to the series, you have some pretty powerful names that are attached to some of the characters as well. As I was looking on your website, who were some of the uh, uh, the background on some of the voices you've got for it? 
Oh, oh, that's okay. Well, I, I did mention Paulette McWilliams. Uh, she is the, uh, she'll be probably doing the voice of mommy. Um, and she, uh, she is a very, uh, she's a singer, a jazz singer. Uh, you know, she's, she's sung with uh, Luther Vandross. She did backup for Michael Jackson. She created the band Rufus with Shaka Khan. Uh, and, and she's just phenomenal. I love Paulette. Um, and then we have Jimmy Hanks. Uh, his name says, you know, it should say everything right there. Jimmy is uh, the younger brother of Tom, uh, and he's going to be voicing Daddy. Uh, and then we have uh, Michael and Patty Silvershire. They are composers uh, for PBS. Uh, Jim Henson, um, I believe Sony. I'm, I'm tr just trying to remember off the top of my head, uh, you know, where they've been, but um They've been out there. Disney. They've they've done. Uh, they've composed for Disney, uh, and they're going to be doing the the uh, songs for the show. Uh, and then we have Susan Rattan, and Susan is an old time actress. She's amazing. Uh, she played in L.A. Law. Uh, I believe we have her playing uh, Grammy. I believe that's her. Um, and then we have Debbie Derryberry, and Debbie is a, a very, very big voice actor. She's she's best known for Jimmy Neutron uh, right now, and she's uh, voiced Draculaura uh, in Monster High and, and numerous voices. Uh, and she was also the writer on Free Willy. Uh, you know the the little the writer that went over the wall with Free w with Willy at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. That was Debbie. She was great. <laughs> that. I still, I can't believe it's still to this day that she was actually on that whale, jumping that wall. Cool. But, yeah, I mean, she's why I love Debbie. Uh, and then we have Daniel Ross. Uh, Daniel is another big uh, voiceover. He does the voice for Donald Duck in Mickey's Wacky Races. Uh, and we have Kellen Goff. Kellen is is a young is a young uh, voiceover, and he does a lot of voices for at, for popular anime. Uh, and then David Zobeloff, of course, David, uh, my heart, um, he does the voice for Gorilla Grodd in Flash. Uh, he also does the voice for Drax the Destroyer in Guardians of the Galaxy animated series. Uh, and Scott Kyle, Scott is uh, overseas. He, he was uh, one of the actors in Outlander. Uh, he played Ross of Glengarry in season two. Uh, and then we have Max Albert Vivino. Max, as I mentioned earlier, is our youngest uh, voice. He is phenomenal. And, and he has a, the voice of an angel. Um, he does a lot of, of singing, and he's just, he's amazing. Uh, and then we have, of course, Bob Nessler and Ron Myrick, who are the WB uh, animators. Carrie Means, uh, who did the voice of Frylock. Uh, in uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, Donnie Most, uh, who was in Happy Days, who played Ralph Mouth. Um, Tony Todd, of course, we all know him from Candyman. Uh, Tony's amazing. Uh, and Armin Taylor. Armin Taylor is another um, voice actor who does a lot of different voices in anime. Uh, and then, of course, John Bailey. John Bailey also does voices in anime. Uh, Robert Catrini, he is a... Uh, he, he worked with Tom Cruise. Um, oh, gosh, I, I can't even think. You know, he's done so much. Um, and then, of course, we have Tina Burke, and Tina heads up my team uh, for merchandising. And then we have uh, Hilde Yannis Biadero, who is our talent manager, and we just we love her. And then there's Andrew, Andrew Miller. And then Andrew is my other half, and um, he is the co-creator uh, the mastermind behind this entire project. He's a phenomenal uh, writer. Uh, he's actually better than I am, and, and I have to admit that. I'm sorry, I do. Uh, <laughs> and he has written several books of, of his own, uh, Unique, uh, and Michael Williams Lives in Space, and he also worked on a, a picture book uh, called Aura Shemin, which, is, uh, which was actually based on uh, his mother. Um but yeah, that that's basically the team. So uh, you know, it's we're we're well on our way, and you know, we just need to, to get the book done and financing, and we're 
all set to go. That sounds like an amazing lineup. You know, you left being an educator to kind of pursue this all, right? Like that is quite the journey to be able to put yourself out there, start making these contacts, doing all of that. I mean, I'm sure it hasn't always been an easy path to have taken, correct? It's just kind of one of those. It was actually, I'm I'm going to admit it. It was actually very easy. Oh, well, it's like pursuing your dream. It came easy for me. I, I am a very big people person, so I don't have a problem talking to strangers. I mean, I, I could walk into a room with 300 people and I'd have the floor in five minutes. Um, I, I really have no problem with that, but I, I did put this together and, um, we started out with a producer back in 2014, but, um, we, we had a falling out. There were just too many issues and, and I'd taken over the project by then. And I said to Andrew, no, I'm, I'm just going to do this. I, you know, and, and I just took the reins and, and I just, got on online and, and grabbed everybody and I said, hey, can we do this? Uh, actually, my late talent manager, Christopher Parker, was the one who connected me to Paulette McWilliams and Jimmy Hanks. Uh, so I really have him to thank for that. And they were the two first ones on board this project. Uh, and they've been with me ever since. Um, and then it just went from there. And, and I was able to run into uh, Daniel Ross at that time, who introduced me to Debbie Derryberry. And... Uh, and, and then uh, Debbie introduced me to David Soboloff. So, you know, it kind of went down the line. And that's how this whole project came together. That's so um, awesome. And then I, I met, uh, I met uh, Bob later on. But Bob and, and, you know, we're just very good friends with Bob. And, and I don't know what I'd do without that man, honestly. I just don't know. Um, but, yeah, it, it's been a journey. It, it has really been a journey. And I'm enjoying every bit of it. So now you're still thinking like the book, will that be published like this year? Is that kind of how, like, I don't know how timelines work on this kind of thing. So this is what you're wanting to get out in the hands of everyone before, you know, the, um, the TV series comes to light, right? Yes. So yes. when can they start looking for this book? Oh, it's, it's going to be a while. Um, I would probably say not until late 2022. Okay. At least, you know, it, it takes time to draw and, and, you know, it takes time to get everything right. And, and Bob is a, is a wonderful perfectionist. Um, so there, there's no way that he's going to let the book go out with any mistake. So I, I would say probably late uh, 2022. Well, that'll be so amazing to see it all come to fruition, this hard work. I mean, that will be um, so many years worth of passion and love going into this project because you're wanting to put something positive and good and enlightening out into the world. A lot of blood, sweat and tears. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And, uh, you know, it it was a very, um, it was a very moving project, you know, because you have to remember, I I was basing a character on my late son uh, and we were basing a character on a, a very fluffy little puppy. We loved so much and we lost him in 2019. Unfortunately, uh, he was 14. Uh, so he'll never see this book, you know, come to life. Um, and of course, you know, Andrew's mom, we lost her in 2018. And again, you know, our, our character Grammy is based on her and grandfather is based on uh, Andrew's dad. Uh, so it, it's kind of like a family project, um, you know, and, and this is this is what we want to we want to do. We want to, you know, show people that this is for families. This isn't just something that was thrown together on a whim this this took a lot of thought and and a lot of tears and and you know we still cry well we we look at you know the next episodes and we say to one another how are we going to write this without elliot here or how are we going to do this without mom i mean it's it's just uh it's been heartbreaking but we have to push forward because this is the legacy that we want to leave for them we never want them forgotten so um, you know it's very close to our heart that's beautiful. It's like that love and loss and like holding their memory and taking like real life instances that you have truly experienced, which, yes. you know, can be so hard to, you know, sometimes put that out there, mm-hmm. like to put yourself out there into those, you know, spe- you know, um, spaces like that for everyone to see. It becomes a little bit more intimate that way. Yes. Yes, it it, it does. But uh, it, it's been quite a journey and it's been a pleasure for us to do this and and uh it's just something we we strongly believe in and uh we need it It, we we believe it needs a voice and and this is what we're doing so we're going to be a voice for everybody out there that has ever thought they couldn't be who they wanted to be or do what they wanted to do because they can do it 
And that's what we want to show them. They can do it too. Yeah. With a little bit of a, uh, you know, passion and dedication and, and the right heart, I think anything is, is possible. And that's what we probably need a lot of. And that's why partial, why we started positively Midwest with our, our group. Uh, we got you joined up today and, you know, you'll see over time, there's different, um, you know, positive posts and inspirational and even our episodes, we try to find ways to educate people and, and let them know this is out there and this is how you can overcome or this is how you can stay positive. And, you know, this, this whole, uh, Thing that you are putting together, you know, from start to to finish is what uh, makes for me makes for such a a realistic, um, passionate story that's you know going to touch a lot of people because it's you know you've lived it and who mm-hmm. better to tell that story than you guys? Exactly, exactly. Um, so it's been it's been kind of uh, amazing to hear how you talk about you know this and. Um, you know, how long you've been working on the journey too, and that you've never, never given up, you know, and that's, that's got to be one of the hardest things I think for you is that, that time that you've invested in the patience. Yes. Yes. It was something I strongly believed in and everybody on this team believes in it. And and that's part of what keeps me going really. And, uh, you know, it's the drive behind this, that, that, you know, Bob is is always telling me, this is going to make it, this is going to make it. And, you know, I, I, there were times that I did have doubts and, um, he pulled me right out of it and he said, no, don't even think like that. This is happening. And I tend to believe Bob because, you know, Bob has, uh, he's very optimistic and he's been in the entertainment business for over 40 years and he knows what he's, he's doing and he knows what he's talking about. So I listen to him now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get those negative thoughts in my head anymore. Well, once you make it a habit, you know, then uh, that's just the way it is. So it sounds like you guys are very optimistic and, you know, dealing with the entertainment industry plus a, um, a more, I don't know if this is not controversial subject, but like uh, something people aren't used to, you know, talking about and witnessing. So, you know, you've got some things that uh, I'm really excited to continue to see how they develop. So um, hopefully you'll stay close to us as well as things change. We can give updates on you know, our sites and, and, uh, social media and stuff too. So, uh, well, Absolutely. and you'll always see it on my Facebook page. I am front row center when it comes to that. So you'll find anything new on that page. That's my go-to. It's perfect. We'll definitely make sure to, to share some of that as well. Uh, how would, uh, some of your books, are those available on, uh, yes. online? How can people find those? And if they want to oh. check out more from you. They can find them in Amazon. They can find them in Barnes and Noble, uh, in Waterstones, um, and and just you know uh, other third party uh, bookstores. If they want to order them, they can go into the bookstore and and place an order. And the bookstore, you know, they can uh, have it sent to the bookstore to pick it up. Um, you know, they have options, so they don't necessarily have to go in there. But my go-to is usually Amazon. It's the easiest, and I think right now. With the pandemic, everybody is ordering from Amazon, and that just makes it easier. So, sure, awesome. Yeah. Well, you're doing some amazing things, and hopefully, sometime we can do a little update and get you and your hubby on here, and uh, mm-hmm. we could do a a double podcast date or something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we're we're fine anytime. So you know, just just let me know what you want to set up, and we're there. Perfect. Well, is there uh, anything else that you want to make sure we mention about uh, any of this before we we give a close out? Um, no, I think I I think I've covered everything that, that I needed to cover. But uh, yeah, just watch my page on Facebook, and uh, you know that that's the best way to, to see what's going on and, and keeping in in touch, and and you know you'll see all the information about the books. So. And you said that Thumbs Up has a website, right? That they can hear Thumbs kind of the has, clip, right? Yes, yes. Thumbs Up has a has a uh, a website. Just type in Thumbs Up, uh, and it'll come right up. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I have the T-shirt on, but it, you know, when you see this, you'll know you hit the right page. So uh, thumb- yeah. <laughs> so thumbsup.com, is that what it is? It, it, no, no, no. It's in Facebook. It's oh, it's in Facebook. Okay. Up. Yeah, so, yeah. We we don't have an official page for it yet. Okay. Um, you know, we, we have to get everything legal first. You know, there's a lot of red tape you have to go through before you can do an IMDb page. So, um, 
you know, once we have that together, then that'll be another go-to page for everybody. But for now, it's, it's just go into Facebook and you'll find it. And uh, the theme song is there so everybody can get to listen to the theme song. Uh, it's real catchy, uh, too, so it's, it's easy to memorize. And once you, you hear it, you're going to be singing it all day, I promise. <laughs> 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 that's awesome well thank you patty this has been amazing i'm wishing oh, you welcome. all the best of luck in this getting to finally come to fruition for you thank you so much and uh, i really appreciate this and thank you so much both of you for having me and uh, we'll set something up with andrew too so perfect well yeah you've done a done a great job we really appreciate your mission and uh hope we can catch up soon and uh yeah so thanks a lot for for doing this uh we're just actually going to air it for this week's episode so it'll come out um wednesday at seven in the morning and um you'll be able to share it with all your cool friends and we'll have a grand old little party thank you thank you thank you so much you guys have been <laughs> great thank you so much you bet we'll definitely stay in touch as things develop and thanks again for being on the show Thank you for having me. You bet. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What do you think of that, my lady? You know, my aunt Marilyn, Stephen, you know this about me, but not everybody else does, is my aunt ran a children's in foster care service for mentally and physically disabled children. You know, for the last how many years she ran that, my entire upbringing. And so I would meet these and get to become family members with these individuals that she took care of that each had their own disability. And Ricky, you know, he's autistic to the point of being, um, he's nonverbal. And so it's like, I learned a lot as a child about these different disabilities or about autism and like different ways that it can affect these children in the different spectrums. So it's really nice to see that there are those individuals that are continuing to put it out there and using their real life experiences to try to help educate, you know, other kids. Cause it's a great way even for like our daughters to learn more about children. So they're not, you know, so you understand when you're at school or out in public and you see kids, it's uh, not something like that's scary cause somebody's different than you. It's that they have been brought to awareness from a TV show or a book. Great. Yeah. And I wanted to say too, that I think it's, it's very important for people to realize that um, as a parent too, which you made me think of this, that it's also your responsibility to ensure that uh, your children, you know, take the um, the right approach when it comes to something like that, whether it's bullying or whether it's, you know, dealing with someone who has got uh, some sort of a, uh, um, a, I don't know, what, what were we calling it? It's a, like, like not a, a disability. It's like a, an affliction? It's a different... De- Different ability is how I've heard it. It's because they can still do everything. They have the abilities. They just have to do differability differently. So it's like a different ability instead Differ, of a disability. Differability. Different ability. I don't know. Dif- differability. Something like that. Differability. Well, we make <laughs> I know up, there's a term. <laughs> we make up our own t- words, anyways, on this show. But um, you know, but that's something as I uh, um, you know have done even done research on bullying and whatnot. You know, generally the kids that are the bullies at times, uh, sometimes their parents are, uh, might be more assertive personalities. And uh, not that you're an adult bully necessarily going to work and beating up people, but how you are on the phone and, you know, how you are with your friends around your kids, things like that. They just pick up on those subtle differences. You'd be quite surprised. So, yeah, it'll be nice to have a situation where, uh, You can now sit down and talk about a subject like this with your kids and have one more thing that helps continue to evolve and grow our world. Mm -hmm. And I love books or TV shows that make our kids go, hmm, and then ask questions. Like, that's my favorite topics. And Erilyn actually brought up autism the other day. They must have said something at school. And so she was asking me different questions about the spectrum and what it all meant. So it's just that more awareness that we bring to our children and talk to our children about it is great. And books and series like this are a great starting point since we know that makes it fun in a sense for children. Yeah, and letting Positively Midwest be a very small part of helping bring that to uh, differing people. Mm -hmm. Like how neat is it that we just spoke to somebody who is an executive producer of a TV series? Yeah, what a an, an journey for us. And already has a bunch of children's books on Amazon and whatnot. Right. <laughs> Aren't we blessed? Yeah, our lives are crazy now. <laughs> okay, well, you feel good? I do. I feel fantastic today. Can we shut her down? Yes. 
Well, thank you all for listening to another episode of Positively Midwest. This is number 63, Holy Smokes. I'm pretty excited about that. Me too. Should we let John Wayne take us out? Please do. Okay. Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for listening to the Positively Midwest podcast. Our hope is to inspire, engage each other's thoughts, and leave you with some great advice. Be sure to join our Facebook group and follow us on Instagram at Positively Midwest Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, share, and screenshot our podcast with all of your cool friends. Every little bit helps. We are on most all major platforms, and you can stream it on our website at PositivelyMidwest.com. Thank you, and as always, please always stay positive.